How's it going guys? Kevin here and today's video we are going to be checking out Formlabs supports. I really want you guys to stop using the default supports. If you are using these you can get prints really really high quality just like this without using the default supports and it's just going to make your lives a lot easier. You're going to have to spend a lot less time ripping the supports off and it's just going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to walk through on the Form 2 and the Form 3 just to kind of show you guys what it's like so that way you can get to removing your parts much much easier. So with that let's get into it. All right, so jumping in, I wanted to start with the Form 3 since that is most likely what most of you are using. I'll get into a little bit with the Form 2 and then hopefully very soon I can get a Form 4 in my hands and start doing this and show you guys sort of what are some of the limits um, for some of the materials I use for what you can get away with with the sports. So working with the Form 3, this is one of the, the smallest parts that I've produced. And you can see here, this is actually post me modifying the supports. So what you can tell here is everything is sort of on the edges as much as possible um, with the exception of this since I have some rounded edges here um, but all these supports are also pretty much the smallest touch point size um, that I feel comfortable using that I've found that still works um, and then the density is way way down um, if I go basically back to I think the default settings which I believe are around here you can see I don't have any warnings there if I go in and select this, you can see it's going to add um, a bunch of larger supports in. It's actually not going to modify mine. I think that's a new feature of the software. But if I clear them and then auto generate selected, you can see that the supports are kind of all over the place. I have some on the underside. I have some on the top side. Um, the software tries to do its best, but it really doesn't know which pieces are critical, which are not. One thing I always recommend when you're orienting the part, for example, this top surface here, uh, as well as the underside surface. That is the actual latching mechanism for this part. And so those surfaces I need to have extremely smooth because that's the functional part of the part. So always make sure to orient your print uh, in wherever the functional part is away from the support. So that way you don't have to worry about cleaning them up. If there's a little bit of debris on the underside. There's gonna be double-sided tape uh, on this area. So if there's a little bump outs, it's gonna be absorbed by that double-sided tape. So always think about that when you're laying supports out and you're trying to orient your parts. So if I go back and I undo back to what I had, one of the things that you wanna to try to do with supports is put them on sharp edges whenever possible. Um, one of the key things with supports is if you put them on a sharp edge, all it takes is a, is a, um, is a deburring tool that you can get for cheap on Amazon or anywhere else on the internet and you just run it down that edge and you've removed all those support marks and you've made a nice little fillet on that edge and nobody even knows where you were supporting it. So it makes the part look a lot cleaner, and then additionally, it makes it much, much easier to break off because you have the leverage um, of being able to sort of break it over that edge, and you can bend the part much farther than you might be able to on a flat surface to knock those supports off. And additionally here, this is a really, really small part, and I'm using the extremely small touch points here. So I usually just sort of start with this lighter version, and then I will go modify it from there. But even still, this part, I could honestly probably go lighter with my supports because uh, I have no red showing. So for a lot of my parts, I'll try to actually go down into the, the red range where if I start editing these supports, what you'll see, so let's just remove, let's say every other one here. And this might not even do it for me. This, this might still be too much. So let's see, let's apply this. Yeah, because this part is so small, I'm likely not gonna get any red. I'll try to just force it here just to show you guys. There we go. So we can see a little hint of red here. So technically speaking, Form Labs thinks that this will probably still print fine. It may still print fine since I'm printing for production and I wanna ensure that I, I don't have failures. I wanna make sure that I'm a little bit more comfortable with this and for this small part, adding a couple extra supports is not a huge deal. Um, I'll pull up a larger part shortly and show you a little bit more of how that changes. But with this, this sort of light red, this is what I typically want to see. And that shows me that I'm sort of right on the borderline. And then I'll typically either go a little bit over or a little bit under, um, depending on my experience once I start printing these out and testing and seeing how, they, uh, how easily they are removed. So now we've switched over to looking at a larger part. Again, this is the finished version. And what you can see is there's a lot of gaps with no supports on this part whatsoever. Uh, if I go and I generate this 
the normal way that form labs would have you do it. And I should probably clear the sports first. So let me just clear these, run it again. You can see there's still certainly some areas where it doesn't add supports, but now it has supports all over this part on the front surfaces here on the side. And so this flat surface and underneath, this is where I'm latching with this part. So I obviously don't want supports there. So the best thing to do is grab that edit tool, go through, start deleting those supports, hit apply, see if you have any red areas and then start to work from there. So if we go back to my original design here. So one of the things that you're noticing, firstly, is the orientation of the part. So again, always try to find those angles, let the resin sort of grow from itself um, and not have to need any supports. So this is unfortunately a part where I'm gonna have uh, basically a brand new part being formed from up here. So if we drag this up, you can see as we form this, this is gonna essentially start as its own part and then need to connect to the rest of the part. So whenever that's happening, I try to make sure that that new part is really well supported because if I try to go extra light on those supports, there may be some flex on the parts and it may be flexing differently than the rest of the parts. Um, even though this is low force stereolithography, there is still some force to be had. Um, and so that can cause a little bit of misalignment with your parts. Um, so rather than take that risk, you just wanna make sure that, hey, I'm supporting this part well enough um, if you so if you have one solid piece, you can definitely go light on it. But if you have multiple separate pieces that are going to connect and join, as you can see here, then I recommend just making sure that you have plenty of supports uh, on that on those separate pieces. But once they're connected, then you can sort of dial it back and go a bit lighter because now they're moving and they're shifting as one piece, so that it's going to be pretty consistent um, as as one piece. And the tolerances on these printers are very very good. Um, in most cases, that would likely just result in a small little aesthetic defect. You might get a mismatched line or sort of a layer line um, on that print, but I have very, very rarely seen it, so you guys shouldn't have to worry about it too much. But you can see there's, there's these very long extended pieces where we don't need to add any support. Because the rest of the part is properly supported, um, we can actually cover most of these distances and because of the angles that we set these parts at without adding any supports. Now, in some cases, um, like this upper piece here, I'm only adding a very small, just three supports here, but I wanna add this here because I do have a shallow, um, almost horizontal part here. And so that just makes sure that that part is going to always pass and I'm not gonna have an issue with it. If I bring this down here, you can see how this is gonna basically slowly extend up. So step through this, you can see that gets very thin. Uh, and one, I don't want extra debris in my tank if this doesn't stay, stick to the rest of the part. And two, I just wanna make sure that I get a good quality print um, every time. So those two extra supports there make a difference. And then since I'm there, I might as well just add a third one. It's not gonna add that much material to the print at that point because I already have the two other supports there. So again, when you're coming through these supports and, and designing them, orientation of your part to start is the most important, but then you really wanna drop down these settings big time. Um, and depending on what you're doing, the size of the part, um, you can go even smaller into the, where you get the warning for the really small parts as I just showed you, or I typically found that the 0.35 works for the majority of the parts. Um, and that's filling uh, quite a large amount of the volume here. And so play around with it, test it out. Um, you can always, you know, take away supports. If you have a print failure, then you have to deal with it. So I kind of recommend starting a little bit on the high side and then slowly backing down. Um, but I found with the default supports that sometimes it's a real pain to remove those parts um, from the default supports that they recommend. So you really want to back it down when you're starting to optimize for these things. Um, and even the stock settings, if you're going to use the auto generate, you want to drop that touch point size and that density down just to make it easier for you. So with that, I'm gonna jump over to a form two now and show you a little bit more of how I have a similar process over there, but there's some slight differences for using the durable material, for example. So one of the first things I wanna show you guys is how I go through and actually modify my support. So this is specifically for the form two. So as I just showed you, I showed you some examples for the form three, showed you a little bit about sort of what's default and then what I do. And now I wanna just show you sort of my placements for the form two and how I sort of judge that. It's very similar for the form three. 
and it's a very similar process and the software reacts very similarly for both of these. So the first thing I do is I go up into the top left here and this default I think is one. I drop it down to 0.9. This is very dependent upon the resin. You can go much, much lower um, depending on the specific resin you're using and you just want to try to play around with it. And the touch point size I think is default seven. I only go down to point. 6.5. Because I'm using much less supports, I still want to have a decent size, and most of my parts for durable are quite large except for these smaller pieces. So I want to have a larger touch size to keep that intact. So if I go and I just start with this piece here, and I click auto generate, you're going to see that is going to create quite a lot of supports here, um, and way, way more than we need. So you also see that it's going up on the inside, of my model now this is a very tolerance specific area and i don't want to have a bunch of supports in there because the little nubs are going to screw up the tolerances for my design so i'm going to go in here edit whoops need to reselect this so i'm going to go in here edit and then what i'm going to do i like to start from the top you can do whatever you want adjust the brush radius so it's wherever you like it so we'll just set it back to three and i just start circling around just start deleting all these so <clears throat> with this design, you'll see there's a little bit of red there. So I had these two supports on the top. I start working my way down. The reason I sort of work top down um, is that helps clear up all the red um, and just makes it a little bit easier for my workflow and the way that I like to do it. Let's see if it likes that letter. Oh, it doesn't really care. And then you can see I'm placing them, placing them pretty far apart. Um, you can see it's not even suggesting that I need a support there but I'm gonna put one anywhere because I like to have a little bit more uh, robust prints. We're going for lightweight, but we don't wanna have failures. So there's a balance there, obviously. So you can see there's a little bit of red here. So what I like to do is just add this. I like just a hint of red across my prints and that usually ends up giving me a pretty good result. Now, this is a fun one here. So we have these vertical supports here. And if I just hit apply, you notice these are coming across. Now the annoying thing is that means that these supports need to be cut um, for you to remove your part or you have to pull it through that gap, which is really annoying and really frustrating. Um, not something you wanna be doing, especially for production. So what I like to do is I'll slowly sort of remove these. You can see that this piece is essentially sort of solid red. That's actually gonna be fine and it's gonna print just fine. I can tell from the angle, it's a relatively um, steep angle for resin printing. Resin can go actually pretty close to flat, depending on what your overhang is. But I also know that I'm supporting the print underneath pretty darn well. And I also have a big just print itself that's gonna support this piece. So I shouldn't really have any problems up here. Now on the lower one, if I go down here, maybe I'll leave one, um, but I don't wanna again have any in the holes. I can do something like that. And again, that is probably overkill. Um, I'm not too worried about this because these pieces are gonna break off. Um, so I'll probably end up leaving those. Those look exactly fine, but you can see how much less supports I have. And now I also have a great piece to hold on to and break this off once I actually go to print this and then post-process this. So night and day difference from the before and after here. So if I just go to undo, so you can see that's, that's the before, and then I'll just do control Y here see how much less supports we actually need to get a successful print out. And this is just gonna make your post-processing that much easier. The only thing that I see here is I do like to go in and add supports, uh, sort of basically give, I'll say four, four points of contact or three points of contact, kind of make small little triangles. So I'll add two down here uh, and that will basically just make sure that I'm really grabbing the bottom of the print really secure, and then the rest of this is gonna come out just fine. So I'm gonna replicate this on this part and then get this printed out, and I'll show you guys the finished result. All right, so I actually have both of those parts here that I showed you. One other benefit I didn't mention is when you have really clean support creation, you can actually nest parts a lot tighter than you otherwise would be able to. And then with this, because I did uh, that extra effort to make those supports just the right amount, literally just reach in, and you pull this off and this part comes off super, super easy. So I can go through, take the rest of these off. It takes me very, very little time at all. And then you also notice there's basically zero cleanup on this part because most of my support was on the edge. So super, super nice. Again, similar on the durable here because I don't have any of those supports going up onto the surface here. Basically just grab this, bend it, and the part comes off 
just like that. It is super, super nice and easy and just makes a world of difference. You're saving material, which means you're saving money. You're also saving time in the post-processing. So it's just a night and day difference. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, need some help or something, feel free to just drop them in the comments below. Always happy to help you guys out. Um, I know there's a lot of other materials that I'm not mainly using right now, so I can't speak too much to those, but I hope I gave you guys some ideas for how to sort of approach those and see what level of supports you can actually use to get success so that way you can easily just take your parts off just as easy as that um, with basically zero cleanup because um, that's the most satisfying thing, especially when you're doing mass production um, like I am here. So thank you guys so much for watching, checking out my video. Be sure to check out some of my other videos uh, in my channel and then be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.